This is my latest thrust vectoring model rocket that is designed to actively stabilize itself using motor gimbling and a reaction wheel. As you saw from the title and thumbnail, this first flight didn't quite go to plan and made an unscheduled landing almost immediately after lifting off the pad. Oh no! I also got some footage from a small onboard camera. It's quite low quality and it's all over very quick, but it's still quite cool to see. As you might have noticed, the rocket looked alright in the first camera angle, holding its orientation pretty well. The TVC seemed to be doing its job here in keeping the rocket stable. The same cannot be said for the other camera angle, where the rocket can be seen to pitch over, if you look really closely, you can see the TVC trying really hard to put the rocket back on course, but annoyingly it is actuating in the wrong direction. This diagram here shows the correct direction for the thrust to be pointed in given its attitude, which is the opposite to what my rocket was doing here. Somehow I missed this pretty simple error in all the testing I did. Thankfully the rocket isn't damaged and I got tons of data. With 30 channels sampled 50 times per second, there is a lot to look at, but the first thing I did is import the data into my MATLAB simulation for analysis. The y-axis is where the trouble was, so I plugged the y-angle into my simulation to see how my rocket should have responded, and plotted it against how my rocket actually responded. As you can see here, the data matches, meaning the control system was working, and the problem lay with how the output was sent to the TVC actuator. Basically, it was turning left when it was meant to go right, and vice versa. This is easy to fix, so hopefully I'll get better results on my next test flight. Besides, the launch pad and 95% of the rocket systems all worked great, with excellent orientation estimation, abort detection and shoot deployment. The clamps also retracted perfectly, so it's good to know that they all work well. The entire launch pad system actually functioned flawlessly, having good synchronisation with the rocket and really fast ignition of the rocket motors. I've got a full video on it linked here if you want to check it out. Now I've got this first flight out of the way, I'll get into how the rocket is supposed to work. It stands at 65cm tall and is built with 66mm cardboard body tubes, which I painted gloss white with some blue roll stripes just to add some colour. I designed this rocket to fly up to just over 100 meters, depending on how everything performs, powered by two D3 rocket motors. You may be wondering why I'm using two small rocket motors as opposed to one large one, and it's because these Klima D3s that I use can be easily purchased in the UK and aren't too expensive. By clustering two together like this, I get the equivalent of an E6 engine, if of course they both light at the same time. I'll now go into how the rocket is supposed to steer and stabilise itself. The thrust vector is controlled using a gear-driven gimbal that rotates the two motors together. It is powered by a couple of servo motors and also lined with cork to provide insulation from the rocket motors. I also decided to control the roll on this rocket, which is done using a reaction wheel. These all get connected to my flight computer, which I talked about in a previous video. Tuning the reaction wheel was pretty simple. I just hung the rocket from a string and found some PID gains that seemed to work. Tuning the TVC, on the other hand, is harder, because you can't just repetitively fly and crash a rocket until it works. Well, ideally you wouldn't. Anyway, I made a simulation in MATLAB Simulink that simulates the rocket's dynamics, the TVC gimbal, and the control system. Simulating the TVC gimbal was a bit tricky, but I eventually got it to work by generating a transfer function using some data I generated with an IMU fixed to the motor mount. Once I have modelled the plant, I drew up and tuned a PID controller that uses the motor's thrust curve to compensate for that big spike at the beginning of the burn. I then reproduced the controller in code and set the gains to the ones I'd found work best in my simulation. Moving up to the top of the rocket, I designed a spring-loaded cup that the parachute and nose cone rest on that can be triggered with a servo motor to deploy the chutes. The parachute is 35 inches in diameter, which is slightly large for my rocket's mass of 440 grams to ensure a soft touchdown. It deploys at 75 meters, but in the flight you can see it deploys early because the rocket realizes it is probably going to crash after exceeding 35 degrees in pitch. I now have a bit of time to resolve all of the issues in the first flight and polish off my code before the next launch. 
which might be a while away because of all the winter weather. I also need to work on the more experimental features on the rocket, mainly the position estimation with the Kármán filter, which annoyingly seems to fail every now and again. I'll also try to get more camera angles next time, including multiple close-up views and a tracking shot, which should be cool if the rocket actually flies upwards this time. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you after the next flight.